We just finished up a pretty extensive bathroom remodel project that I built this vanity for. Here's the nastiness that used to be there. The entire space was changed to include a new wall. Because of the project schedule, I only had eight days to build the vanity. I didn't know exactly how wide the vanity needed to be until the walls were in and drywalled. And once that was done, I only had eight days before the quartz countertop was scheduled to be templated. I spent a good deal of time drawing this one out because I wanted to make sure everything was spaced perfectly. I wanted to maximize storage space, but I also needed to account for the plumbing. I also didn't precisely know how deep the sinks were going to go. This was my final design iteration. I had already milled up quite a bit of white oak prior to making my first cut. This is for the face frame, doors, and drawer faces. Because of my compressed timeline, and because this is what they were really designed to be used for, I opted to use pocket screws for most of the joinery in this project. My only real hang-up with pocket screws comes from woodworkers who leave the holes exposed. There are no exposed pocket screws on this vanity. Aside from speed and ease of use, the other nice thing about pocket screws is they make woodworking a little more accessible to people who don't have as many tools. Properly using pocket screws, you can do quite a lot with just a drill, miter saw, and a table saw or circular saw. With some careful measurement and maybe an hour's worth of my time, I was able to get to this point. With all the face frame parts cut to length, I started drilling holes. I'm not gonna lie, this gets really tedious. I edge sanded the pieces prior to assembly. One of the keys of using pocket screws for this type of thing is to make sure that the pieces are really held in place good before you start screwing them together. I use spacer blocks to help keep my alignment as perfect as possible. When putting in pocket screws, it's also important not to over-tighten the screws. This is why I'm using a drill instead of an impact driver. By limiting the torque, I can get the screw just tight enough to hold together the joint without stripping out the hole or snapping the screw. With the face frame done, I moved on to the drawer faces. I went with the simple slab style, so the drawer faces came together pretty quick. I made floating panel style doors for underneath the sinks. To make the panels I needed to resaw and plane some more white oak down to quarter inch thickness. After a quick edge joint, I glued together my pieces to make two book match panels. The calls keep the pieces flat and aligned to each other, and they prevent the joint from buckling under the pressure from the clamps. For the door rails and styles, I used a shaker style bit cutting set. These bits are the exact opposite shape of each other and are used to cut interlocking joints. The rail side bit also cuts the groove for the floating panel to be mounted in. Prior to assembling the door, I also drilled out the holes for the Euro style hinges. I pre-stained the panel before gluing it up. I did this so that if the panel shrinks, there wouldn't be any unstained gaps around the edges that would start to show. I 
I started the finishing by putting down some oil-based gel stain from General Finishes. I stained the face frame very early on because this stuff needs at least three days to dry and cure before I can put water-based top coat on. Water-based top coat for my finish wouldn't have been my first choice, but because of the timeline I needed something that I could spray and that would dry quickly. While all those pieces were curing, I started the cabinet carcass. I used a single sheet of pre-finished birch plywood. This was the first time I've worked with pre-finished plywood before, and this is the only way I'm going to do the interior of cabinets from now on. Whatever this stuff is coated with is incredibly tough, and it's barely more expensive than unfinished plywood. A single sheet was not quite big enough for what I needed to do, so I used some scraps to piece together two parts that were never going to be visible. This was also the only time I busted out the domino for the entire project. To attach the interior bulkheads to the base, I had to get a little ridiculous. I used precise alignment marks and a hodgepodge of clamps to hold these panels in place. The reason they don't extend all the way to the back is I wanted to leave room for plumbing and I didn't have quite enough plywood. Aside from cheaping out on a second sheet of plywood, there was really no point in having the bulkheads go all the way back to the wall. The cabinet is 24 inches deep, but the drawers are only going to go back 14. The face frame was attached with a combination of pocket screws and glue. I put together a simple base with toe kick out of some scraps. With the vanity cabinet itself complete, I started the drawer boxes. For the drawers, I used beech, which I resawed and planed down to half inch thickness. Because these drawers are very light duty, I was able to go with a very simple construction technique. After cutting all the pieces for the nine drawers to length, I pre-cut the grooves for the bottom panels. A dado stack made short work of cutting rabbits on the side pieces. I cut up some quarter inch plywood for the bottom panels. After I sanded all the interior surfaces, I began assembly. For a light duty drawer like this, glue and nails are enough. To put the drawer slides in, I decided to make it easy on myself and tip the cabinet on its side. I made a simple jig to draw a precisely positioned line that was exactly square to the opening. This line marks the center of where my drawer slide needs to be positioned. I used a center punch to get my screw hole started exactly on the line. The other half of the drawer slide mounts very simply to the bottom of the drawer box. I'll be clear, these drawer slides are very cheap and I probably won't use them again. This was the first time I tried them. They work okay. Luckily, these are light duty drawers that won't be used very often. I had a hard time finding reasonably priced face frame hinges that are Euro style and soft close. 
I ended up using frameless hinges and installed these little spacer blocks to compensate for the thickness of the face frame. Because of this problem, I installed little corner stops. With the stain fully cured, I finished with General Finish's high performance. I used a foam brush for the face frame, but I sprayed the rest. After the top coat cured overnight, I installed the drawer faces. I used playing cards to evenly set my gaps, and then I screwed the faces on from the inside. With that complete, the vanity was carried upstairs to the bathroom that was being remodeled, where it fit into the space perfectly. Once the countertop was cut and installed and the plumbing was connected, this job was done. If you made it this far, thanks for watching.